Alrighty. So, what I'm going to show here is using the X Touch to control my X32. I'm using a core. What I'm doing here is I'm controlling the um, X32 edit software uh, with OSI MIDI. So, what I will do here, my mixer is already powered on and OSI MIDI sees it and what we need to do is open a configuration file and I've got a couple of them here what I think I need to do is get rid of one of them so I think I will I think I will open a configuration test configuration we don't need anymore I'm going to delete it so now when I open this it will automatically open my X-Touch configuration file. Um, now, so the next thing you have to do, and unfortunately there's no better way to do this that I've found so far. I suppose you could probably, there are probably software programs you could use to uh, record uh, a macro, but I don't really care that much. It's not that hard to start it up, but it's important that the X32 edit software is running and connected. Um, and it is. It says it's connected. I've got it set to connect automatically. So it's connected to the mixer through uh, Ethernet right now but OSI MIDI is going to control the software through MIDI through USB so what we'll do now is turn on the X32 touch or the touch and it comes on and waits so what it'll do now is Okay, it found the mixer through the network because I'm connected to the network with a network cable as well. So you can do it two ways. You can use two sides of this thing. You can use the X Live control or you can use X control, which is what uses the OSI MIDI software to control X32 edit. So now the edit is open, got OSI MIDI waiting already set with the configuration all all um, I need to restart this because this wasn't on it's important that the X touch needs to be on before you start the OSI MIDI software and then what will happen is it will find the input and output devices which is the controller itself automatically loads your configuration file and you click start now see what happened here things changed now I've got this set configured to my liking right now I've got all the X 32 X live overlay has mute groups here you see that I've got everything muted right now so if I press this everything's unmuted now if I use the channel control watch what happens here so let's say I'm on my channel and I want to change the EQ so I go up here and I press EQ the EQ pops up it's on David's channel I can change it here on the encoders uh, let's see see I've got gain control here on gain 2 um, you can do it all here so you don't need the display with the software you can there's a couple ways you can do this you can do this through uh, network control same way but then when you're in network it doesn't control here so you can still make changes like I can change my volume but if I if I change channels here it's not controlling the software so yeah basically what you want is you want to be on X control 
that way you're changing here let's say I want to see my uh, effects group effects one right here are your effects groups one two three four which are your groups that you use for you know say echo delay um, reverb whatever you assign so if I press that I'm looking at vintage room now which is my effects number one if I press this one it's now it's gated reverb then stereo delay and vintage reverb so what's happening here is it's showing me who is assigned to each of those groups and you can change that so if I wanted to change my level of reverb on vintage room which is effects number one I press that and by the way if you press it twice it'll come on and off press it once I could turn myself up I could go channel and turn that up see right here I'm turning that up press it again it goes away works the same way for mixed buses so if I wanted to change my mix bus which is four I press mix bus four that is my bus this is what I'm hearing and I can change it here automatically I can look at the EQs on those channels by changing the channel position that's the EQ on each mix bus not sure why Dan's is not on but we're going to change that <laughs> it should be anyway glad we looked at that so in addition to that all of your other things there are other things too that you can look at these buttons are all assignable uh, in the case of your effects one two three and four you can come over here and I've got them set so that this button shows effects one two three and four and this one shows five six seven eight um, it's just pretty freaking fantastic um, press it again that goes away sorry press the wrong button actually press any other button um, plus press global view and you go back home the flashing light I've got set to my tap do my delays tap so if I want a real long delay I do that if I want a, a fast delay I just tap it fast um, other things I've got assigned you've got your pans all set here they'll come up here uh, obviously your EQ for whatever wherever you are if you're say in Maine I think I've got these are set for uh, <laughs> to look back I don't remember DCA's left right um, yeah mono center left right uh, I forget <laughs> and DCA's anyway typical is left right it goes back automatically um, I've got uh, these buttons assigned as your channel your configuration your sends and main um, uh, this one selects the main it's main select so if you're selecting channels and notice when I select the channels it's changing to that channel and it's going to show you whatever applies to that channel in the case of the bass it's assigned to mono center and main but not my vocal channel I don't want vocals through the subs so 
if I wanted to look at, let's, I don't, I don't want to see EQ anymore. We're going to go to global view. Um, you have the same control of faders. You have your fader banks. In this case, we see um, uh, 7 through 16, and then uh, all the rest, and then your auxes and your USB returns, your effects returns. Yeah, pretty slick. So easy to make on the fly adjustments when you're in global view. You can change anybody's volume. You could go to bus one and change their volumes. I'm not looking at bus one right now. And I'm on the wrong layer. So because bus one is only has only volume set on channels one, two, and three, we would need to be there to see those. Uh, if I go to uh, bus two, they're only listening to me and Dan singing. Bus three is only guitar. Bus four is getting three vocals. That's me. And bus five is keyboards because I've got I've got one bus set for keys because I'm running keys through the mixer. For recording and then sending them back out to an amplifier on stage which is connected to the keys bus anyway so uh, I forget what the I set that one for <laughs> that's part of the challenge though remembering what you've assigned uh, in the case of pans, you press pan, it'll show you the pans on every channel. EQ, obviously. Uh, and then I've got this button assigned to gates and that one to dynamics. Because we've got the rest of them set here. The only complaint I had about this thing is that it doesn't come with a configuration file and <clears throat> in order to set it up through to control your computer through MIDI so that you can see changes on your screen oh by the way I didn't tell you that this screen is also touch sensitive <laughs> which makes it even that much more cool because then you can I can go to places here like EQ and just reach up here and change it this way. So that's kind of fun. Uh, in the case of say a drummer, you know, maybe you don't have the display right next to you, but you've got this and this is really all you need because it still shows you everything. You've got your scribble strips <coughs> and uh, it tells you here what your, you know, the different things. I'm, I'm looking at bus five and eq um as you change things it'll show you where you're at gain left or right uh because we're on gains now we're on pan eq um learning what those things mean you just kind of takes time as you navigate you can watch the display and kind of figure it out but that's part of the game with this is figuring it out because there it can do so many things that it just it, it's uh there's no at least not that i found any in instruction manual there are some videos on youtube that talk about certain ways to control different things you can control uh your DAW, you can control various different other devices and mixers with this. Um, but in my case, my specific use for it, and there really is only, you can only really use this for one thing at a time. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to set it up for your X32 or your DAW because your settings will have to be different and you have to make them manually. Um, I bought this with the sole purpose of controlling my X32. I wanted, I want this on stage 
close by me because I run the sound with the X32 and the X32 remembers most everything so I don't have to do too much. We get our PA a kind of a baseline setting in practice and when we go out all we do is go out front and bring up the levels. It's pretty damn easy. You can if you have a uh, I've got an X Live. I this is supposed to control the X Live card. I've not really figured it out. I got it to work one time. Again, it's a thing that I've not found any clear cut instructions on how to do that either. Um, but I can go out front with my iPad connected to the X32. If I have my X Live card in there before a gig, I can pull up a recording of practice and do a, a virtual sound check. And as long as everybody's volumes are pretty much the same when we hit the stage, we don't have to do a sound check, period. We just start playing. It's just beautiful. I love the X32. Um, all of their features and benefits are just so cool. I can never see going back to analog. You can't tell me that there's enough of a difference in the way it sounds to go back to analog. Bullshit. <laughs> Most people's ears cannot hear that. I I can maybe sort of kind of hear it, <clears throat> you know, but most people don't care. It's not enough to really notice. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so what have I not covered here? I think that's about it, but <clears throat> notice the difference in the display. If you go to X Live Control, that's when you're going to see pretty much what you see on your. If if I had my compact hooked up running the same scene, this is what I'll see on the display there, because it's directly connected to the X32 through the network cable now, not using the USB cable that's connected to this computer controlling this software. If I control this software, the software is connected to the X32 through network as well, and that's how it's connected. So if I control this, it controls that. It's just a different way of connecting. Um, yeah. Can't say enough about, good about it. Uh, there are times when I'm playing, I play the bass, I'll be standing right next to this thing. I can reach over, hit my fader bank, make a quick change to whatever. If the bass drum's too loud, psh, boom, done. <laughs> Gotta love it. So, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Love, 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 global view. Uh, takes you, well, oh, I'm not in, see, I'm not in X control. <clears throat> if I hit, if I'm in buses, whatever bus I'm looking at, if I hit global view, boom, I'm back. Global view, I can see what everything's assigned to, what signal they're sending. I can see their EQs, where they're set, and yeah, I like, I'm, I'm, I use them quite a bit. Anyway, I digress. That is how I'm using the X32 Touch to control my X32. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, like and subscribe. I do post this kind of content from time to time. Um, have any comments, leave them down below. All right. Thank you.